African Americans uh, within the ballet world have this history. As, I mean, beyond my generation of, you know, I think of Raven Wilkinson and Janet mm -hmm. Collins, who are told to uh, make their skin lighter in order to fit in with the corps de ballet. But it's still that idea that I think is so ingrained in in the way <clears throat> ballet dancers think. Um, and the people that continue to continue uh, this, the next generations of artistic directors and things like that, it's still ingrained in us that we see ballerinas as white. I've played many roles of different animals where I'm always painted white um, throughout the history of me being within the company. And um, I, you know, it got to the point where I was, I was very comfortable with the makeup people and, and my place within the company. And I was being painted white again to do the role of Puss in Boots and Sleeping Beauty. Um, and jokes were made um, here and there that I think were just ignorant, not meant to hurt me, just that, oh, I'm always painted white, the one black girl in the company. Um, so I turned to the makeup artist and I just said, why can't I be a brown cat? And she was like, okay. And then she painted me brown. <laughs> but there was just something deeper that I felt that mm -hmm. it was like, oh, well, I guess I, sh I should have said that a long time ago. But it made me feel very different mm -hmm. to see a brown cat up there, to see a brown woman on the stage. There are people in the audience that are going to relate to seeing themselves up there. Mm -hmm. Virginia, I remember um, you telling me once a story about, uh, I think you were on European tour in the early days of Dance Theater of Harlem. and 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 that you had been wearing pink shoes. Maybe pink you tights could, and yeah, pink shoes, yeah, maybe absolutely. Could, I mean, it feels like it's a related kind of story. It is, absolutely. Um, so when Dance Theatre of Harlem came together, when we, when we performed here in 1970, we were um, wearing pink tights and pink point shoes because that's the convention. It's, it's the convention. It's the way people expect ballet to look. But, you know, pink tights and pink point shoes were, were designed to match the skin tone of the people who were wearing them you know, this European art form, uh, it was to create a sense of line. The complete body is making the same statement. Uh, so we, uh, we had a, a really fantastic um, run uh, at Sadler's Wells. Uh, uh, we had 113% attendance. I mean, we were sold out to the <laughs> rafters and it was so fantastic because people hadn't really seen uh, ballet this way. And that's what Arthur Mitchell was trying to get people to mm -hmm. do. He wanted people to see ballet in a new way. But because we had been so successful, they brought us back to London for another week at Sadler's Wells. And, and as we traveled through Europe, Arthur Mitchell started you know, looking at these dancers on the stage, many hued dancers of color, because we were many different complexions on the stage. He says, well, you know, why are we wearing pink tights? What are, we, what are we looking like that for? Let's make a line that goes from the tip, tip of our fingers down to the tip of our toes that is one statement. And so, you know, much scrambling around and much dying of tights and figuring out how to make the shoes the right color. Mm -hmm. But we came back to Sadler's Wells and we had flesh-toned tights and flesh-toned shoes. And it was, it was like a loud click. That's right. That's the way it should look. Because it really is about making the body look the most wonderful. But it's also about who are these dancers? It's not erasing ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, which a, a lot of ballet is about erasing the individual and making you fit into a unified whole. It's about bringing who you are forward. Mm -hmm.